Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited today because I am guest designing for Gina K Designs. So I'm playing with the January 2020 kit. I'm just showing you real quick a couple of the photos, but I'm going to get into the kit and then we'll talk throughout the video about what I did. Right here is a picture of the kit. This is chock full. Three stamp sets, a stencil, cardstock, dies. I mean, you this is amazing. And one of the things I really was excited about this kit, I'm going to show you. Oh, this right here is the free with 75, I believe it is. So that's a great sentiment set. And then I'm just going to show you a close up of the uh, stamps right here. This kit is pretty awesome when it comes to new card makers and seasoned card makers. So if you're a seasoned card maker and you get a kit and it has a lot of uh, consumable products in it, meaning you can use them up. Um, you might not, because you've been doing it a while, it might not be every little thing in there that you would use. But when you see this, uh, a kit like this, you're going to use these stamp sets, you're going to keep them in your stash. Um, it, I feel like it's a lot more conducive to a seasoned card maker, but then also a new card maker because you're building up that stash qu pretty quickly with just one kit. I mean, this is. Uh, th I got three stamp sets in this kit, which I've never seen a kit give me three stamp sets. So thank you, Gina K. So I'm going to move on to my first card and I am going to use the large floral. Now, one of the great things about this floral is if you don't feel like coloring, you don't have to color anything in. You just use your inks. So I'm going to pull out my Atelier inks from Ink on 3. And I did a review on these inks. If you want to check that out, I'll link that um, below. But I had to, I forgot that when I stamp the red color, it stamps in red. But when you use it as watercolor, it's a lot more pink. And in my mind, I was thinking it was a lot more pink. So I was going to use this pink and purple. Well, I stamped it twice in, in the red and it turned out to be red and purple. <laughs> but I liked it anyway, so I kept it. And I kept it ultimately because the image is stunning. I'm pretty sure there's probably supposed to be some green foliage in there somewhere, and I didn't even care. I was like, this is so pretty. I'm keeping it the way it is. So I stamped that out. I did it twice. I took a little dauber, and that's how I added the purple of the Atelier ink. And um, that's how I got kind of like that gradient look. All right, I took out this amazing font stamp, the Hello gorgeous. And I'm just going to go black with it. I'm using Versifying Nocturne Claire ink, Versifying Claire Nocturne. And I'm just stamping this out because it gives me a really beautiful crisp image. I go back for the sub sentiment, which I actually put at the top of the hello. This, I'm telling you, I got handwriting envy staring at this stamp set. I also, side note for Christmas, bought um, myself, um, a book of how to hand letter. So it's one of my 2020 goals. We'll see how far I get. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really want to have nice handwriting like that, like lettering handwriting. I'm adding some neat and tangled. Um, these are the magic sequins, I believe. They're so pretty. They catch the light. I was inspired by those sequins to add a little bit more to this card. So I pulled out this mirror card stock, which is the holographic. And I just placed that on the back. What you didn't see was I cut a rectangle out of that bad boy underneath because if you follow me, you know I don't like to waste that because <laughs> it's just going to sit under there and just be sad because it's not being seen. So I cut out a rectangle on the inside. I just had this frame right behind it. And there's my finished first card. So if you can't tell from my voice, I'm having a great time with this kit so far. Let's move on to the second one. Okay, I took out some dark purple ink here, and I am going around this was sort of like an eggplant color cardstock. I'm using up the cardstock I have in my stash, so I couldn't tell you what color it is, but it's pretty, and I thought I'm going to go with my um, very popular to me, because <laughs> I've been doing it a lot, this get a shadow look around your card. So I pulled out the dark purple, then I took some black soot. And I'm just using some uh, blending brushes and we're getting this really pretty shadowy look. And it's kind of like a highlight in the center when you didn't really have to color the whole piece of cardstock. It's Cheater Code 101 and I love it. 
I am then going to take out my stencil and some Gina K glit, Glitz Glitter Gel. And I'm. this is the, I want to say it's the white. Yes, looks white to me. And I'm going to place this because this was, this was like my grand idea. I'm going to do like this whimsical center portion of the stencil. <laughs> and then I pulled it back and I was like, no, I don't like that at all. But I pulled it off. And people have told me on YouTube, you cannot place back down your stencil. To which I say, challenge accepted. And so I stared at it for a while, as you can see. <laughs> this is all behind the camera, just riddled with hesitation. But I was like, no, I'm doing it because I don't like the card anyway. So it's either going to go in the trash or I'm going to attempt to put this thing back over it. Okay, so I did it. Yay! <laughs> I was able to. Um, it's just all the same pattern. So you just have to line it up and... If, like I said, if I screwed it up, it was going in the garbage. So I thought, why not try? So I just added the rest of my Glitz Glitter Gel here. And one thing I really love about this Glitz Glitter Gel, this is um, sort of like a grainy type, is it cleans off your stencil really well. Um, I don't find that it leaves a lot of residue behind either, like some of them with mica in it, because that stuff kind of gets everywhere and embedded into my craft mat. But the Gina K does clean off very nice. And I did a full review on embossing um, pastes and all kinds of things, if you haven't seen that. So I compare pretty much every property that they can do. Okay, we are moving on with this card. I took out some black cardstock. Ignore the gold rim of this black cardstock. This was a card fail, but I did not want to get rid of the black cardstock. I was going to use it for purposes like this. All right, I'm thinking white embossed. Then I was like, no, you got to jazz it up. So I pulled out some Wow Silver Embossing Powder, which can I tell you I looked high and low for this to add it to my little photograph at the end, and I could not find it. So I'm going to try to find it to link it below, but wish me luck. Anyway, it is amazing. This camera and the uh, it does not do it justice it is like the shiniest and most glittery embossing uh powder i've ever seen so it's really really pretty okay so i'm staring at this you should have seen me behind the scenes here i pu pulled out twine i'm doing like that fun whimsical circle of twine that's going to sit behind the hello i'm wrapping the twine around <laughs> i should have left all that in there because it's pretty comical, but this video would have just been way too long with all of the experimentation that was happening. I decided, no, it's just going to say hello and it's going to have a sub sentiment and that's it. And I was pleased as punch because I have the highlight on the cardstock, the ink blending, the glitz glitter gel, the stenciling. They're, this card does not need anything else in my opinion. So I just left it. I have my hello. I have my sentiment. I've been missing you, which I love because I live far away from a lot of people that I love. And so this is a card that I can send to anyone and it's got hearts. So it's most likely going to be sent out at Valentine's Day. Okay. There's the close up of that. Let's take a trip down when a card fails road. So <laughs> I thought this would be cute. I have this little banner at the top you know, kind of holding the cards, hanging down. And then because the natural line of the stamp is at an angle, the piece that it comes with, I drew the lines <laughs> at an angle. I was like, this looks terrible. It looks like these cards are in some sort of hurricane. So I said, no. Then I was like, let me mask off that line. And I'm just going to stamp out my own envelopes. But I didn't replace or remove the purple tape when I was doing it. <laughs> Oh, goodness, I need a vacation. So I got it right, and I masked off the line, and I removed the tape, and then I am stamping all over my image here. So um, you can see me doing that, and then I'm going to mask off these and stamp out some more. Okay, I'm using some Post-it labeling tape to do my masking. And basically, I'm just using the residue leftover ink from stamping on the cardstock 
and I'm going to stamp that on my masking. Um, I don't show that. I do fussy cut it off screen and just kind of place them down. So I, of note here, I am using Bristol Smooth cardstock, and that's important because I'm going to be using some water brush pens. So funny story about the water brush pens. Um, my husband was shopping on Amazon and he saw a flash sale for water brush pens and somewhere I don't talk in detail too much about specific things I use in my craft room I talk about like generic things and he saw this flash deal I think they're normally like $25 and they were like maybe 11 and he's like oh I'm gonna get these for her <laughs> so he got them for me and I was actually thinking about doing a water brush pen review for my channel and I was like, well, we'll add these to the mix. Um, but anyway, they're really good. I like them. They came in 20 to a pack. I'm having a feeling that all water brush pens are equal. I mean, they're a little different. Like there's enough to talk about to say there is a difference in these. Um, these are called Gen Crafts. And when I say they're different, so they're a little bit thicker of a barrel. Um, I, I don't know if it's me or what, but I think the cap keeps falling off one of them. And that's annoying. <laughs> but it could be just one defective barrel. Um, but they blend amazingly. They are pigmented. They come in two or three to a color theme. So like a dark red and a lighter red, a dark orange, lighter orange. And so it makes blending fun. So here, what I'm doing on my card here is I decided instead of coloring them one whole red, one whole orange, so on and so forth, I made it look as if the rainbow was kind of coming across the uh, card stock. And so I took my, took me from the rainbow of the red on the left all the way to the pink. And I also want, did this because I wanted to see how they blended together and they blended amazing. And I just added a little bit of water to smooth out some of those more harder to blend colors. Okay, now I'm gonna make straight lines with a T-square roller, and it's gonna look a little bit more symmetric. Symmetrical? Yes, you know what I'm saying. Um, here I have my corner rounder. I'm gonna soften up this card a little bit by rounding the corners. I am gonna add the sentiment, Happy Galentine's Day, which can I just say I'm so happy that's a thing. My very first time hearing about Galentine's Day, which is where you celebrate your gal friends, your gal pals, was I was st at my last job when I started last year in 2019, and I got a Galentine's Day card. And I was like, how, as a card maker, do I not know what Galentine's Day is? But I think it's phenomenal, I love it, because there's just all kinds of love and we should be sharing and spreading all kinds of love. And so uh, you can make a, a bunch of cards for all your friends and now I have a sentiment because I definitely did not before this. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna bubble cut my sentiment out and I have I call it that because I am cutting it out as if it was a, an image of some sort right around the letters and I you can't, it's really hard to mess that up. So I would encourage you to try it because I think it's more interesting than just a square or rectangle cutout sentiment. Um, and I don't have a die that matches that, but you can, you don't have to go exactly where the letters are. So that's why it's really forgiving. So I would highly encourage you try bubble cutting, super fun. Okay, I'm gonna add, I had a boo-boo of ink. And so I thought, well, let me embellish. So a couple things I did, I added stickles to the hearts and I am adding a diamond, which these diamonds are from Stampin' Up, and they have been in my card making stash since I was a first day crafter. <laughs> so we're talking 2007. And I thought, well, let me use them. So I did reinforce it with some glue, though, because I don't trust the adhesive. They've been in there too long. And that finishes this card, clean and simple, almost. I wanted to put some glitter cardstock behind it. Um, and shame on me. I did not cut out a, a rectangle behind this one. And it's two reasons. They are reasons. They're not excuses. Not trying to make excuses. I just ran out of time. <laughs> so I had to just um, let it go. And I did. Okay, so I got that card finished. And that will finish up the three cards that I did with this kit from Gina K Designs. Thank you so much to Gina K Designs for inviting me to guest design this month. I had just oodles of fun with this kit. In fact, I 
literally felt emotions of sadness because I didn't have any more time to play with it right now. I am getting ready to head out to Arizona for creativation, which by the time you see this will be over. And so I will um, talk about that trip and journey in the next video. So thank you again for hanging out with me today and thank you to Gina K Designs. I hope that this video kind of gave you a little bit of inspiration. I tried to make the cards um, pretty different from each other and use quite a few different techniques. So I hope that was helpful. As always, I'm available in the comment section to chat it up or answer any questions that you might have. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you don't want to miss anything from me. And I will list all that I used in the video below except maybe the wow embossing powder. <laughs> but everything else will be down there, especially the link to Gina K Design, so you can check out this uh, kit for January 2020 and see if you want to get a hold of it. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you all in the next video. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.